Welcome back to Sawtief Tactical and the next episode of the 300 Blackout Build Series. Today, we've got the heart of the gun, the barrel. And we've also got the pistol brace. And of course, with the barrel, gas block, gas tube. We're getting this thing very close to being ready to take it out and shoot, put some rounds down range. So, it's exciting to me. I hope it's exciting to you guys. Before we do get started with this video, I want to thank everyone that subscribed to the channel. I'm just about at a thousand subscribers and that's very exciting to me and I appreciate all of you guys for helping the channel grow. Okay, so quick recap. To show you what we've got into this so far, we've got the Aero Precision M4E1 Lower Franklin Snake Special Edition, M4E1 Upper Receiver. Right now it's got an Aero Precision Lower Parts Kit in it. I do have a Radian Talon Ambidextrous Short Throw Safety on the way, as well as a Geisley Maritime Bolt Catch, so I will be switching those out shortly. I also, when I got the lower parts kit, I got it minus the fire control group because, of course, I had to put that Geisley SSP single stage trigger in it. It's got the Magpul MOE SL grip, Radian Raptor charging handle, Geisley Super 42 buffer system with an H2 buffer and a braided buffer spring, Aero Precision Nickel Boron Bolt Carrier Group, We've got a bunch of these Magpul 300 Blackout P mags now. We've got the Holosun HS512C Optic with the Donut of Death reticle. And recently, the Aero Precision Atlas R1 7.3 inch handguard in flat dark earth to match everything else. Going for the black and tan look. Now today, we're getting very close to finishing the build. We've got a Roscoe 8.2 inch, 300 blackout, one and seven twist, uh, 416R stainless steel barrel. SB Tactical SBA3 pistol brace. I don't know if you can tell, but I like those. Aero Precision gas block and pistol length gas tube for 300 blackout. Let's go up close, unbox this stuff, and put it together. So you can see what we've got so far in all its glory. I uh, only put this um, barrel nut on hand tight because still got to put the barrel in. Well, let's take a look here at this barrel and everything else because I'm very excited to be getting this build completed. SB Tactical. SBA3, this is a fantastic brace system. Um, I've used it on a couple of other builds and I like it a lot. It works very well and uh, it's not the most expensive one, which is nice too. So there's our SBA3. You guys have seen these before. I use one on my 11 and a half inch 5.56 AR pistol as well as my EPC-9, um, AR-9. So we will be using that. Gas block, gas tube, nothing super exciting about these. Low profile gas block to fit under the handguard. Pistol length gas tube, stainless steel. And uh, let's take a look at this barrel because that is what I'm most excited about today. So the Roscoe Manufacturing Comes in a very nice box. Open it up. Obviously, this box could be used to accommodate a barrel much longer than my 8 inch 300 blackout barrel. <laughs> so, here we go. This is 416R stainless steel 1 in 7 twist 300 blackout barrel. This thing looks very nice. Check out those feed ramps. Just really, really high quality machine work. I think this barrel is gonna be perfect. One of the reasons I got this barrel specifically 
is it is pre-dimpled for your gas block. So I didn't have to get a dimpling jig and uh, do that part myself, which is kind of nice. So, now that we got the rest of everything we need here, not everything, but most of the things we need here to finish the build, let's put it together. YouTube won't let me show actual building of guns, so through the magic of video editing, and here we have it. We've got the Roscoe barrel installed, the handguard fully installed correctly. Make sure when you are installing a barrel nut that you use your aeroshell grease. Very important because torque specs are wet. Um, so, yeah, we are getting there. This is, it could be at the moment, a fully functional firearm. Let's go back up top and uh, finish the video up. So here we go. At this point, we do have what is hopefully a fully functioning firearm in 300 Blackout. Now, I did run into a little bit of an issue, and I hope it is not a issue that will cause anything not to function correctly. But after installing my gas tube into my gas block and then the gas block onto the barrel, the gas tube didn't look perfectly straight like it has on other builds I've done in the past. Now, obviously there is a roll pin that attaches your gas tube to your gas block. And then as I showed you guys before, this barrel is dimpled for the set screw to hold the gas block in place correctly. Um, I did blow some air down through the gas tube. I could feel it coming through the gas block. So technically we should be good. <laughs> Um, but I guess we'll find out the first time we take it out to the range and uh, hopefully I don't have to take the whole thing back apart and Figure that out because it seemed like it only went together one way. But anyway Here we go. I don't know if you can see in there. You can see the gas block kind of seems to go over to one side inside that handguard um, But I really hope that that does not end up being an issue this thing is looking pretty sweet though by now. It looks like a real gun. Next week, I've got the Radian Talon Ambidextrous 45 degree short throw safety. I've also got a muzzle device. I'm actually just gonna put a 30 caliber bird gauge flash hider on here for now until I get the can because it is a direct thread suppressor. Um, and I also got the Geisley Maritime Bolt Catch because in the past, I've used Magpul bad levers on a couple of my ARs, um, but I don't want to in this one. Like I said, I'm trying to go higher end, mid tier on this build. So I just figured something with a little bit more surface area for locking the bolt back and for dropping it. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about this entire build. Please subscribe to the channel so you can follow along the rest of the build series. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous ones, I literally go through this entire build piece by piece over uh, six or seven episodes by now. And uh, so I hope you guys have been enjoying that. If you have, please drop me a like. Please share this with anyone that you know that um, wants to build ARs or just likes firearm kind of content. And uh, leave me a comment. Um, about any of your experience, if you've ever had a gas block that didn't look like it lined up perfectly straight, but when you put it all together, I mean, the bolt carrier group slides back and forth on it, no issues. Air seemed to go through it just fine, so maybe it's not a problem. But I would love to know if any of you have ever run into that same issue. Anyway, from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped. Actually, before we go, I want to mention one other thing. So I recently got a package from Lock Grips, L-O-K Grips. So a sticker right there. It sent me some uh, G10 grips for my 1911, but also firearm stands, which the picture for this video, the thumbnail, will be shown on this stand. I wanted to mention them in this video because these stands are really cool. Um, for if you do something like I do with a YouTube channel or if you just want to display your firearms and you can actually switch these uh, the mags out what, what serves as a magazine um, I've got the one for the AR-15 right here I've also got one for 1911 and these just switch out on the same base plate 
which is really cool. I'm gonna be doing a whole video on their products here in a couple of weeks on the G10 grips, which I love the way they look. Check that out, beautiful grips. Do need to order another screw from Springfield though because ran into a little issue pulling that out. I'll get more into that in the future. But I uh, just wanted to thank Lock Grips um, now and uh, we'll have a full video coming out reviewing the grips, the gun stands, everything else. From Sawtooth Tactical, Stay strapped or get clapped.